Fast forward. I was thrown out of school when I was nine years old. This was because the school wanted my parents that I take medication for selective mutism. I didn't speak at school. My parents refused after consulting with several psychologists, psychologists who couldn't find anything wrong with me. Being excluded at such a young age made me more passionate about inclusion. Today, probably those of you who knew me later on in life, in the university or at work, would be shocked to know that I was treated as an abnormal child when I was a little girl. Feeling excluded is isolating. Being labeled abnormal is soul destroying. However, I was able to channel this perceived disability in a positive way. I was always nourished and supported by family and by people that I chose to be in my family. They acknowledge our differences and help us thrive. I developed a more introverted and reflective personality. I read more. I became more curious, especially about nature. And I wonder more how to solve problems, in particular, how to create a more inclusive society. Resilient, I became an engineer, a scientist, and an entrepreneur. A scientist, we're used to experimenting and failure. Failure is normal. Well, actually, I was kind of a failure to that school. But just by failing, we learn. And then we can succeed. Exclusion, such as the one that I suffered, is not just limited to individuals, but is also suffered by other larger segments of the society, including even countries. In today's global economy, decisions taken by a small group of people in developed countries can actually affect the life of billions of people in developing countries. Many times, these people don't have a say on those decisions. Take, for instance, climate change. People in these developing countries that normally are the most affected by those decisions. Coming from Latin America, after working in the industry in the USA and in Europe, I was able to see this firsthand. Indeed, it was shocking to see how this global exclusion was also present in the technology and innovation sectors as well as in academia. I had the chance to work with very talented people developing cutting-edge technology, which technology that has, has been globally exported. And there, I could see how they thought that the technology was the answer, the solution. However, being born, living, and working in Latin America, I, it, was, it taught me that how limited it is to use technology that hasn't been designed to our context. I realized then that a different approach was needed. Creating innovation capability that can be sustainable must be done 
in an inclusive and collaborative approach. This motivated me whilst I was pursuing my PhD at the University of Cambridge to create a collaborative platform to support the building of innovation capability locally in Latin America. This platform that started as a student-led organization who supported principally the international research collaboration expanded to become an award-winning startup through which I am leading a work in building an inclusive approach in, te in technology for sustainable development. Inclusion is one of the largest challenges that we face today in many aspects. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are 17 goals agreed by 193 countries to be achieved by 2030. They are a blueprint for peace and prosperity for the people and the planet. They apply to both developed and developing countries because these are for global challenges. And embedded in all of these 17 goals is inclusion. Responding to these sustainable development goals in my new approach towards technology development in inclusive way, I have prioritized in three aspects. First, the development and promotion of enabling infrastructure. Second, the building of local innovation capability. And third, education for sustainable development. Since 2015, I've been working with researchers of the University of Cambridge and Brazilian universities in the identification of priority gaps and opportunities for sustainable development. We are now co-working, co-development, solutions and building local innovation capability to tackle their local challenges. Particular focus in the efficient management of water resources and energy, especially in small-scale farming and cities. Why small-scale farming? In the state of Santa Catarina, where our Brazilian partners are located, small-scale farming is an important source of income to many families. It actually accounts for almost 30% of the local GDP. Despite its regional importance, the family farmers don't have normally access to technology, and sometimes they even lack of the basic connectivity infrastructure. Moreover, they are digital literate, many of them, which makes this technology inclusion gap even more difficult to close. To tackle this gap, we are now developing a project, a pilot project since this year in Brazil that brings together our international team partnering for these goals and challenges. The pilot has three pillars which align completely with the vision already mentioned. The first pillar is about technological solutions as enabling infrastructure resulting from co-development. The second is strengthening the local innovation ecosystem and capabilities. And the third relates to education in sustainable development and the impact of technology on children's education. The technological solution consists of a network of sensors that can provide in real time information that can be of access to more remote areas. Because it's of low energy consumption, it also allows affordable infrastructure. The first uh, part of this pilot 
related to the integration of these network sensors in a prototype hydroponic greenhouse that is located in Brazil. Currently, this system is measuring and providing data in real time that is really valuable for the users and to prove and validate the greenhouse. They are measuring the weather inside the greenhouse, the water quality and nutrients, and the water level of irrigation. This information is improving their practices in the daily operation, and more import importantly, making them more productive and aware of their practices. They have been able to reduce the use of their resources by 10%. The second part of this pilot relates to development of capability. It's not just about technology, remember. So, during the first month of this pilot, between June and July this year, we were able to train more than 70 people between end users and technology developers. Part of this process was engagement with industry, policy makers, entrepreneurs and researchers. Because the goal is to work with them in supporting the development and strengthening of a local domestic a technology cluster that can provide solutions and products to the local industry. By this way, local developers can create their own solutions in an inclusive way tailored to their needs. The third part relates to the future. Here we have heard several talks about future. This addressed the education and sustainable development and how the technology can impact them. Children between the ages of 6 to 12 years old from a public school of the region of Santa Catarina will interact with a small-scale version of the hydroponic greenhouse that is powered by solar energy and monitor with a network of sensors. With this, we want to study how an early exposure to technology and to more than that, to the sustainable and efficient food production system can impact on the children's education, their families and the local community. Technology plays a powerful role in building inclusive communities. But it has to be done properly. What I mean by properly is that if technology is not designed, developed and implemented in, with and by an inclusive mindset, we can actually create more exclusion. Many people, from single individuals to entire countries, have been marginalized, excluded. But we can and we must use technology to give them voice. Because innovation is not just about technology. It is about people. Leave no one behind. Thank you. Fast forward.